Uh, hello, everybody. So welcome to the JMO workshop uh, to look at the results of the Morris census undertaken in summer 2020 by Jack Worth, uh, who is a statistician by trade. So um, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over straight over to Jack. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pauline. Yes, yeah, statistics. Hooray. Um, it's so nice to see all of you. Um, it's been such a long time and so cut off from uh, from you all and from dancing that it's um, it's just nice to see you all. And hopefully we'll see you again soon with a pint in our hands uh, and maybe even some hankies in our hands or something similar. Um, <clears throat> anyway, yeah, statistics. Uh, hang on, I'm just going to fiddle about and uh, get my screen to share. So if I do that, is that working? Yes, that looks like it's working. Excellent. Um, yeah, so um, statistics, findings from um, a Morris census. So I'll tell you a bit about what the Morris census is. Um, but basically, uh, around seven years ago, I thought it would be a good idea, as I was a statistician, to um, answer some questions that we kind of think we know the answer to, but actually maybe we don't, if we don't actually try and measure them properly. Um, and as I was, my job was measuring things properly and doing surveys and things, I <clears throat> thought it might be a nice idea. Um, and it turns out to have been an okay idea. And I'd done it um, in 2014, 2017, and then uh, did one uh, last year, because uh, this time last year, everyone was stuck in their homes. So it would be, I thought it would be a, a good opportunity, a captive audience uh, to uh, to try and collect some data and find out what was uh, what was happening in the Morris world. Um, so what is it? So um, it's an online survey. So thank you very much if you or your side uh, responded. Uh, it, the, the online survey is only as good as the people who return responses. So thank you very much for responding uh, so much uh, as well as you did. Um, so it's designed to collect information from all Morris sides in the UK and around the world of all different sorts and different flavours. Quite a challenge writing a survey to be generalizable across all different countries and all different uh, styles of Morris uh, and everything that's under the kind of Morris umbrella. Um, so, uh, but uh, it collects lots of information about about sides basically. Um, as I said, I did it before in 2014 and 2017, uh, and the what sits behind it is a kind of database of different. Uh, all, all the sides that are registered as part of the Morris organizations, plus a few more that I know about that aren't. Um, and then I've got some of their characteristics. So what I can do is when you get the responses back, you don't get responses from everybody, but um, you know the characteristics of the ones that you've got responses from, you know the characteristics of the ones that didn't respond. So you can statistically weight it to say that what we've got is nationally representative. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, lots of people responded, which is brilliant and fantastic. I mean, so the response rate has been rising over time. It was 64% initially, and it was 70% last year with 569 responses, oh, responses from uh, 569 UK sides, which actually uh, kind of industry standards is, uh, is pretty good. So it, it really gives a really uh, nice, rich picture about what's, you know, what the characteristics of different sides are and then also now that I've done it three times, kind of how things are changing. So a lot of the um, the narrative will be about uh, how things are changing, what direction things are moving in. Um, and the reason for doing it was just to kind of understand what Morrisides are like now. There's a lot of historical research and kind of what Morrisides used to look like and uh, things like that, but not much contemporary research about um, what Morrisides look like now. So I thought it was an interesting thing to look at. Uh, and hopefully you'll find some of the some of the content in this interesting uh, enough to kind of understand what the Morris world looks like and how it's changing. Uh, so, um, yeah, you pr probably have an appreciation from this from the kind of member lists, uh, but uh, just to confirm that the Morris Federation has the, has the most sides in it um, and has been kind of growing over time. Um, uh, the uh, Morris Ring has around uh, so around 20% of sides are part of the Morris Ring, um, but that's been going down because the other organisations have been growing more quickly.
Oh, I think Jack's just frozen there. Local internet issue, I expect. Perhaps he'll come back in a sec. Yeah. Um, so I probably got to hear, didn't I? <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, won't surprise you to know that uh, Cotswold is the... <clears throat> uh, is the most commonly danced uh, style. And uh, we, yeah, you won't surprise you to see that Cotswold is the most uh, commonly danced style with 39% dancing it regularly and 6% uh, dancing it uh, occasionally. <clears throat> um, border also um, up there, a quarter of sides dance this regularly and 13% infrequently or occasionally as part of their repertoire. Um, lots of other styles um, on there which are kind of relative minorities, but um, altogether, as you will appreciate, there's kind of lots of different styles out there. <clears throat> In terms of how that's been changing, so there's been quite interesting trends. So the number of sides has been growing over time, um, slightly, uh, but within that, uh, the proportion of sides that are Cotswold sides has actually been going down uh, slightly, 47% couple of few, uh, seven years ago to 45% more recently. A uh, number of border sides has been increasing. Um, Northwest, again, I mean, it's down very slightly uh, and uh, wrapper has been, uh, is relatively small at kind of 11% of all sides, but uh, it's been increasing um, slightly. So there's different trends going on and uh, different things um, happening, uh, but Cotswold is generally in, uh, slightly downward in terms of the proportion of sides and border, certainly going up lots of new border sides and lots of growing border sides. So in terms of membership, how many, um, how many members uh, different sides have? So the UK average is 19 per side, uh, which varies by style quite a bit. So kind of Northwest and border sides tend to be among the largest. Uh, maybe not surprising that Appalachian, Clogstep, Mumming, Rapper sides tend to be a bit smaller just because of set size. Um, and this is not just kind of rapper sides, but sides that dance rapper. So this is, um, yeah, so it shows a, shows a variation. Sometimes some styles are larger on average and some are, some are smaller, um, but generally about 19 per side, some of whom will of course be in uh, more than one side. Uh, so what I do is to estimate how many there are in total, um, then account for those who are in more than one side. Uh, so take take them away, so we're not double counting them, uh, and then multiply by the total number of sides. And then because that number of sides has been growing over, um, slightly over time, uh, the, the total estimated number is, is also growing over time. So Morris doesn't appear to be in decline, there are in fact more dancers now than there were uh, seven years ago, very slightly, uh, but kind of going up from just below 13,000 to around 13 and a half thousand now. So, so there's been some increase, uh, which may be surprising given some of the, some of the later findings. So in terms of uh, male, female, uh, gender balance, um, plus also this year in response to quite a few sides getting in contact with me last time, uh, there's a new uh, non-binary slash other um, category which was added which was uh, around half a percent uh, of people responded um, uh, but, it, but in terms of um, male female the gender balance is now exactly 50 50 in the UK so exactly um, as many male dancers as there are female dancers um, that's that's the overall uh, UK average uh, in the chart is shown the proportion that are male, uh, which obviously varies between organisations. Uh, hardly surprising that it's a lot higher in the Morris Ring, but as I'll show in a minute, that's been changing. Um, and higher among Longsword, Cotswold sides, where kind of two thirds 
uh, of dancers are male uh, compared to uh, kind of Garland, Appalachian, Clogstep, where it's uh, two thirds female. So again, a wide differences between different styles in terms of the, um, the gender composition within those groups. Um, so I hinted that there had been some change in that. So the UK total has, uh, these, this is the proportion that, uh, that are male. So proportion that are female is the kind of inverse of that minus this um, non-binary slash other group, which is only in 2020 data. So it's been moving towards being more female over time from 54% male in seven years ago to half and half now. Um, and there are other signs that this is the this is the direction that everything's moving in and um, and it will continue to to move in the kind of more female uh, direction uh, over time. <clears throat> um, I said there's there'd been some change in the Morris ring and that's evident here where seven years ago 97% of uh, members of Morris ring sides were uh, were male uh, and that's dropped steadily over time uh, to 88% uh, more recently. Um, it's been pretty much not really moving anywhere in the other organisations, but the big change has been in the Morris Ring. Um, that's uh, in part due to uh, constitutional changes uh, that have been made over the years. So 2011 was the year when um, the Morris Ring uh, changed its constitution to allow sides to have female musicians, and 2018 changed the constitution to allow um, females to be to be members of uh, member sides. So that has had a quite big, uh, big impact. Um, so you can see, so, so the data collection started after that first change, but already um, only 60% of sides in 2014 were all male in terms of musicians. So there'd been, there'd been substantial change in there in terms of um, female musicians becoming part of Morris Ring sides. Uh, and that's dropped to 49% more recently. Um, and then you can see the change to um, to allowing dance members to be female in the ring has led to uh, a big change in uh, sides kind of rules and what their what their um, what their composition is. So from ninety six percent of sides that are all male dancers has dropped to seventy five percent in twenty twenty. So quite a lot of sides have responded to. Um, the ability to uh, to have female members, um, so around a quarter of sides have um, have shifted uh, to that in the last three years, which is quite a big response to a constitutional change. But uh, I guess it wouldn't have been a constitutional change without sides wanting it. Um, so added a question this year about what the if a side had recently made a change to its kind of rules on. Who, uh, whether um, what the gender about composition of membership could be, then what was their reason for making that decision? Um, so to increase recruitment and to promote inequality were the two kind of given reasons, and then people are invited to offer any other reasons if there was anything within that that I'd missed. Um, to increase recruitment was the major reason for two thirds of sides, uh, and was almost always a reason for sides uh, changing their. Uh, gender of their members, um, which in almost all cases is changing from either female only to being mixed or from male only to being mixed. Um, to promote equality was a, a kind of another reason um, that was cited by quite a few sides. Um, a minority of sides said that there were other reasons and most of these related to uh, just a kind of opportunistic thing that uh, it wasn't a particular policy change uh, it was more so someone who wasn't included had asked to join and so the policy had been changed in response to that. Um, but those are the main reasons. The main reason is to, that side cited was to, to increase recruitment, um, which will have been an issue for um, several of those Morris Ring sides uh, deciding to change quite recently. So the, the age distribution of UK Morris dancers, uh, again, maybe not that surprising that it's skewed towards older age groups, um, but um, perhaps it's kind of underappreciated what underappreciated what the extent of that is. Um, so this data kind of measures that. 70% uh, of Morris dancers are over 50 or 50 or over. 
uh, and more just over half are 60 or over so that's quite a quite a shift in the distribution towards really uh, older age groups uh, and only 10 percent uh, are under 30 um, which is really um, quite a small proportion um, differences by groups so the age distribution in Morris ring is even more skewed towards age older age groups so three quarters are over 50 and only seven percent are under 30. Um, so that's quite an issue for the future um, of those sides, but it's not restricted restricted to the ring. It's kind of an issue across across all th all the organisations. Um, so this chart shows different styles and the proportion of side members that are over fifty. So as I said, the UK to the UK average is seventy percent, but there's quite a difference between different styles. So Stave, Garland, Appalachian tend to be quite um, skewed to older age groups, um, but Rapper only 45%, I say only, I mean 45% uh, of members are over 50. Um, so 55% are under 50. So that's that's quite a difference from, from a lot of the other um, styles out there. Um, Border and Cotswold, which are the most danced are kind of near the average, which you'd kind of expect, but yeah, a bit of a bit of a variation between different styles. So it's been changing over time. Uh, the average age of Morris Dancer started out at 52 seven years ago, but it's been steadily rising up to 53 and now it's 55. So so in six years, the average age has gone up by three years. So there's not much renewal going on. It's more the cohort is getting older or any renewal or kind of new members are in older age groups as well. So that's happened across all three organizations. So Morris Fed average age has gone up three years. Morris Ring average has gone up two years. Open Morris age has gone up six years in six years. Um, so it's just happening across, across the piece in terms of getting older. Um, and the proportion who are under 30 has been reducing uh, over time as well. So that's gone down to 10%. That used to be um, a bit higher. Um, in the last two surveys, um, I've asked about uh, the proportion of side members who are from black, Asian or ethnic minority, uh, ethnic, uh, minority ethnic, um, ethnic groups. Um, so very small numbers uh, are reported. Um, but overall, once you scale it up, there's only an estimated 110 UK Morris dancers from that 13,000 that are from a BAME background. Um, a bit of variation by um, organisations, but generally just low across the piece. Um, obviously low compared to the UK population, which is uh, considerably higher in terms of um, BAME background. So, um, Recruitment, how have sides been uh, doing with recruiting new members? So I asked a series of questions about uh, new recruits, which are defined as those that were new to Morris Dancing and still active in the side. So it doesn't include those who joined from other teams. You know, it's not about a side's own recruitment. It's almost like the, the whole Morris world, how it's re recruiting new members. Um, <clears throat> so on average, uh, so UK sides are about, have about 19 members and on average have recruited just under three members each, um, but wide variation between different sides, some who've recruited lots and some who haven't recruited very many at all. Um, differences between organisations, so that average in Open Morris is over three, whereas Morris Ring it's, it's much closer to two, although since the gender change, particularly 2017 up to 2020, that's actually gone up. So the Morris Ring is recruiting more than it was uh, last year, even though it's the, the, the lowest among the three organisations in terms of the number of recruits. Um, big differences by styles as well. So Molly and Border sides attracting lots of new members and recruiting like crazy uh, and growing as a result. Um, less so for Appalachian, Mumming, Clog, Step uh, and Cotswold is below the average in terms of the um, the number of new recruits that sides are, are bringing into their into their sides. 
So as I, as I was hinting at earlier, the we overall the proportion that a male female has reached 50 50 50 um, overall. Uh, but this is the sign that they're it's continuing to skew towards um, female because uh, rec new recruits decides are overwhelmingly female. So in the latest data, around a third of new recruits are male and two thirds are female. So, you know, just over time, just more women are coming in uh, than men are coming in. And that will eventually shift, continue to shift the, the gender balance uh, towards uh, being majority female. Um, <clears throat> that hasn't really changed much between in the Morris Fed and Open Morris, but again, especially since that change to the constitution in 2018, the Morris Ring has seen uh, a fall in the proportion of new recruits that are male. So a third of new recruits to Morris Ring sides in the last three years have been, uh, sorry, in the last two years uh, have been, uh, have been, uh, yeah, sorry, two thirds have been male, but a third has been female, which is, um, which is quite a big shift from what it was before. Uh, so the average age of new recruits has also been steadily rising along with the overall average age. So the average age of a recruit six years ago, seven years ago was 41. It's now 45. So along with sides getting older, recruits are getting older as well. Um, I think this just links into a wider point that, um, that recruits tend to look like the side that they're joining. Um, and so it's uh, it's it's no surprise that the the, the those who are joining are looking uh, keeping up with what the what the membership looks like uh, in terms of um, in terms of age and also in terms of gender. So what recruitment methods um, are sides using? Um, so I've asked this question several times over the years, and it's it's always come out with roughly the same answer. Uh, which is that <clears throat> a lot of sides use word of mouth. A lot of sides do use social media uh, and recruit friends and they give out recruitment leaflets. But in terms of which ones sides found to be most useful, uh, that was overwhelmingly uh, using word of mouth and recruiting friends. They tend to be um, <clears throat> what sides report as being the most effective. Social media a little bit, but not as much as sides use it, um, giving recruitment leaflets to the audience, more than half of sides do that. Only 7% say that's the most effective method they have used recently. 12% um, said none of these methods have been useful. Maybe they're feeling a bit uh, <laughs> like it's tough going in terms of um, recruiting new dancers, which uh, I'm sure many sides will uh, associate with. Um, yeah, so I asked uh, a few questions about um, kind of attitudes. It's quite difficult to ask questions about attitudes because you're asking people to respond on behalf of their side. So you don't want too much of it to be kind of personal opinion uh, coming through the person who's responding rather than on behalf of the side. So there's only so much you can ask in this kind of survey um, because perceptions will differ within uh, a side. But I thought this one was fairly safe territory in terms of um, they're just being and a kind of widely understood goal of the side uh, in terms of what they what they do um, and to ask about the extent to which preserving tradition is, is an important um, part of what they do in terms of the style of dance and and whatever as opposed to uh, reinventing or uh, creating new. Um, so quite a wide variation in, of responses here. So 40% agree that preserving tradition is important, uh, but 23% disagree, 36% are in the middle. Um, quite a big variation uh, in terms of responses. Um, the Morris Ring is the most traditional. I don't think that will surprise uh, anyone particularly. Um, and uh, less so in Morris Fed and even less so in open Morris, but wide variation across all of them. So even even seven percent of Morris Ring uh, sides disagree that preserving tradition is an important goal of the side. So there is variation. Uh, variation by style as well, which won't necessarily be surprising either. So mumming and clogstep tend to be the most 
um, agreeing that tradition is important. Um, I guess it's it's quite a, it, it can be a hard question for some <laughs> for some styles. So Appalachian, for example, very low, but maybe not surprising given the just different context to it and different history to it. Uh, and Border and Molly again. So these Border and Molly are the ones that are um, growing and recruiting lots of dancers and also tend to be um, those that think that uh, tradition is less important and not as important as a goal of the site. So maybe those things are linked, but um, just an interesting kind of correlation. Um, so I always ask this question about how optimistic sides are that they'll be performing in five years time. Um, and actually recently I checked the, those sides uh, that had said they weren't optimistic in 2014, weren't optimistic about being still being around in five years time and just see how many of them still are. So a lot of them still are, um, but they're much more likely to have folded if they said that they were not optimistic back in 2014. Um, so that was kind of useful verification of the, <laughs> the fact that it's picking something up in terms of whether sides are likely to fold in the future or not. So um, it's a useful, useful indicator of how sides are doing. Um, so quite a lot of sides are optimistic about still be performing in five years time. Um, uh, I should say this was kind of last April as well. I mean, a lot of sides haven't met up in the last year and maybe in quite a different position now. Uh, we were talking just before about, you know, at what point we do another one and actually maybe some of this has changed and it's impossible to know maybe at this stage whether things have changed. Um, but but nonetheless, that's that's the kind of context of when this question was um, was asked. Uh, but, you know, quite a lot of sides are optimistic um, and less than a fifth are not optimistic uh, about uh, about still being around in five years time. But that's a quarter of Morris Ring sides. Um, so. Uh, that there's there's differences between different um, organizations as well. Um, and then so taking those sides that are not optimistic and then those that are optimistic and then comparing their characteristics, um, it's a little bit of a difficult chart to follow, but um, basically what it says is that sides that are not optimistic about continuing in five years time are have a greater proportion of male members. They have a lot more over 50 members. They have a lot fewer under 30 members. Their recruits tend to be over 50 and a lot less likely to be under 30. Uh, they tend to be in the Morris Ring, less likely to be in the Morris Federation and the Open Morris. They're more likely to be Cotswold, Molly, Mumming or Northwest sides and much less likely to be border sides or wrapper sides. And they're more likely to say that preserving tradition is important. So it kind of underlines a lot of the trends that were um, that were kind of coming through um, all of the data from elsewhere, um, which is uh, the following conclusions. So uh, it may be surprising given some of the data that the number of dancers in the UK has continued to grow, um, particularly the age distribution. You may think that that's a kind of ticking demographic time bomb that means that uh, at some point it has to go down. Uh, I would agree with that, but it hasn't gone down so far. So um, it's uh, continuing to, to grow. Um, Morris has reached gender balance. So it's now 50-50 in terms of male, female, but it's likely to be majority female in the future. Just the number of recruits that are female is much more than are male. So it's, it's skewing that way in the future. Um, I mean, just generally, Morris is fairly unrepresentative. Despite gender, it's unrepresentative by age uh, and certainly unrepresentative by ethnicity uh, in, the, in the UK. Um, Morris is becoming stylistically more diverse. So the, the proportion of, so Cotswold are the, the, most, the most sides, but that tends to be in, uh, is showing kind of relative decline in terms of the proportion of sides that are Cotswold coming down things like border and wrapper growing in terms of popularity and recruits and number of sides and proportion of sides that are part of the UK. Um, and the differences in the characteristics of the sides that are likely to continue in future and that are feeling like they're less likely to continue in the future just accord with all of these things. So they tend to be more likely to be have an older age group. Uh, they tend to be those kind of sides that are recruiting well and that are 
um, kind of growing generally overall, like border and wrapper sides, uh, and they tend to be recruiting, yeah, recruiting well, recruiting younger, uh, and less uh, less inclined to uh, to tradition as a kind of important goal. So those are the kind of um, conclusions. Um, I'd be very interested to hear um, what you uh, make of it all and how how you reflect on on some of these things. I hope that was um, I hope that was useful.